Um, now, apparently, I wanted to switch gears a little bit, but still talk about entertainment because apparently there is now a uh, movement. It, I just, uh, I, I just, uh, it just came across my desk. There is now a movement to cancel Greece because of its misogynistic and sexist, well, you know, everything. Um, I found this out as I was thinking about the 2000 blockbuster film Shaft featuring motherfucking Samuel L. Jackson. Now follow me here. I was thinking, there's a lot of racial slurs here. As Sam Jackson says the word maricón, which is the word that I thought that I uh, wanted you to make sure that I wasn't saying earlier. Now I'm actually saying it, but that is, that is a word that translates to, you know, f- you know the, the, the F word for gay in English. Now, in Spanish, that word is still in play. And even in some parts of the U.S., the word is still, you know, the F word for gay is still perfectly fine to be used. I would say it, but I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, It's not about being vulgar. I don't give a shit about that. Uh, I think it's awful, and I don't use it except in the context of, like, you know, a reference to prove a point. The fact that I even had to say that after mentioning the word or mentioning something close to the word tells me that as soon as someone's bored enough, how long until they come after Shaft? And for the record, I want to come after the new Shaft. But only for one thing. You couldn't find someone to speak Dominican Spanish in New York City? The dude who played the Dominican gangster opposite Jason Bateman sounds like what a white guy thinks a Dominican gangster sounds like. I loved Sam Jackson. I loved him. He did great, as always. But please, next time, I could put you in touch with several dudes that look and sound like a better gangster than that guy. The accents were so bad. And I'm sure he sounds great, and I'm sure he does great in other films. I'm sure he does great speaking English. But, like, it just, it was bad, man. And their Spanish was bad. Their English was bad. I was just not a fan. Not a fan. Aside from that, it was a, it was a decent, you know, shoot 'em up flick. But either way, John Singleton, you got some explaining to do. What the hell, man? Anyway, switching gears. I have a question. What is your gree gree? The first time I heard that question was on Penn and Teller's bullshit. A grigri is a voodoo charm, a spell, or an incantation to ward off evil. In the bullshit episode, they talk about recycling being a grigri because it doesn't do as much for the environment as we say it does. Now, I love Penn & Teller, and while they had some valid points, I do believe recycling does more good than they say, even if it's marginally less than the hippie down the street thinks thinks it does. But now... I look for other grigris. It was a good episode to get me thinking about other things, other, other things that I that that you know, other amulets that we have in modern day. You know, other grigris in my life. A big one for a long time that I still have to some extent now is my faith. It's a you know another grigri I have is uh, right before I do a show or right before I DJ I have a certain ritual I have to shower right before any performance I have to do this 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 there's always a, a ritual no matter what happens I have a I, I have to have a shower or I just I, I don't have as good of a set and I actually just read something about uh about dopamine levels you know being being shot up and that makes sense because when you're performing when you're doing a performance you want your dopamine levels to be up so that you have a better performance that's that's kind of the you know it's one of those things people aren't going to have fun if the dj is not having fun you know so but some grigris are bad some of the grigris are very bad like i'm gonna stop Loving who I want to love because a bigoted sky daddy says you can't love someone with your same plumbing. That's a, that's a grigri. That is a grigri of grigri. That is a grigri. That is a life. That is a life altering grigri. I I couldn't I couldn't imagine having to make that decision. I couldn't imagine having to having to to come out as gay. That would be, whew, that sounds scary, man. That is scary. Even today, even today in the land of acceptance and all of that, I'm sure that, you know, that would be, it would be perfectly fine. But I got to tell you, 
the idea of coming out in the 90s, props to you gay people that came out in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s. Anybody that came out before, anybody that came out, period, for sure. But, like, I mean, there are levels to this shit. And 1970s gay people got really, I mean, talk about getting chastised, you know. Or pre-1990, I guess. You know, anybody, and I don't know. I just think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sign of bravery. But a lot of it had to do with a personal grigri. They personally did not want to, you know, piss off their sky daddy. Now, some sky daddy grigris are good. Like sky daddy says, if I'm good to others, then good things will happen. Now, if that's the only reason that you're going to be doing good, you're just a fucking nice psychopath. And you need to reevaluate your definition of what being a good person is. And hopefully you figure that out before you figure out that the other thing is not entirely foolproof. But it's a good grigri because ultimately you're doing something good for someone else. Now, ultimately, with all of that, what I learned is that it's good to have some grigris. But don't take them so seriously all the time because sometimes those grigris can be life-altering for the worse. Now, I'm going to take a break and come back, and when I return, I'm going to chat with George Diaz about the goings-on of the day, including the Sun Sentinel closing, a new project called Growing Boulder, and more right here on The Hijack on 